What's going on everybody, it's Variant and welcome back to another video. Today we're once again looking at the top 10 most impactful cards for the meta, this time from the Twilight Masquerade set. Of course we have some honorable mentions and first is the Hyper Aroma which is also the first Ace pack that will be mentioned in today's list, allowing you to grab 3 stage 1 Pokemon. It has been used in some Gardevoir EX decks and some other decks that are prominent with stage 1 Pokemon. Next honorable mention is the Tatsugiri, combined with the rescue board and of course being in the active when you need it, it is quite an opportunity allowing you to look at the top 7 cards and choose a supporter you find there. You can also stack this ability if you have two Tatsugiri in play. And the third honorable mention which like Tatsugiri pops in many decks is the gemming tower which basically turns off all tools. Now moving on to the actual list, in 10th place we have the Bleasy EX and the whole Bleasy deck engine. And sadly the deck has not been so popular and not so good but it is worth a mention because after all it is a full deck and it has gotten some results, it's just not that popular in the current meta. Same thing is with the number 9 spot and that is the Greninja EX. And at first this card looked really amazing, but it just lacks a card, just like Raging Bull did last time with it the least. And it is combined with Frostlice and that allows a lot of different gameplay, but other than that I think it still just lacks what it needs to be one of the top decks in the meta. In 8th place comes Legacy Energy, which is firmly used in Lugia Vistar in a combination of course with the newly released Wellspring Mask Ogre Pawn. And of course Lugia has just become a force to be reckoned with once again and uh, since it's rebirth it's still staying strong. In 7th place is the new trainer Kieran. And similar to the Jamming Power and Tatsugiri it is a tech card in a few decks like Charizard or Dragapult allowing their Pokemon to hit 30 more damage to their opponent's active Pokemon or being able to use it as a switch out if necessary. At number 6 is the Iron Thorns EX. This card completely changed how Lost Zone was being played that format and in combination with Iron Hands EX, Andrew Hendrick completely destroyed its opposition on its march to the NAIC and winning the tournament as well. With its ability the card is really annoying for a bunch of decks, especially Raging Bolt and Rage Drago, and of course it has got a deck of itself with just 4 Iron Torn CX. Next up on the list we have Monkey Dory, and as if Gardy was not already busted this format, it has received yet another powerful card in Monkey Dory. With its ability it unlocks numerous possibilities of taking out opponent's Pokemon or doing multiple prize turns and it is combined in many other decks as well. In the last set the English version didn't include the special illustration that was in the Japanese packs but is now available in Shrouded Fable. At number 4 we have Tilmask Ogre Pond. Tilmask Ogre Pond EX was the card that Raging Bolt EX was missing. And if you remember, I kept saying before in the last video as well that Raging Bolt is gonna be a good deck once. And I even played it to the UIC and you know how that went down if you have seen the vlog. And yeah, the card was really the acceleration engine of energy that the deck was missing out. And it has completely revived the Regidrago deck as well. Third on the list is the Blood Moon Ursaluna EX. And basically... Its ability is the same as Radiant Charizard for every prize card taken by your opponent. It requires one energy less to attack and that's why it fits in a lot of decks as a tag card and as a last resort attacker when you're low on prizes. I really love the art style that came with the card. There's three versions of it, but this one is the most beautiful. Once again, I had a huge debate with myself which card should take number two and number one spot and in the end I decided for the unfair stand to be in the second spot. It's used primarily in Gardevoir EX and Charizard EX and other decks as well and uh, it's even starting to take out Prime Catcher uh, in many decks because it's really devastating being used in turn 2 when opponent is like 
semi setup, takes a knockout, and then you unfair stand them, and a lot of times they have trouble recovering from that. Taking the number one is the new Dragapult EX. Of course, here to honorably mention is the newly released Dragload as well with its powerful card draw engine. Together, they have formed a new deck that is taking out decks one by one, going of course by the name Dragapult EX deck. The irony, of course. And as well, mentioning the Dragon Pokemon because this Pokemon has no weakness, it is of course used in Regidrago V-Star decks as well, completely reviving and revitalizing the way the deck has been played. Overall, the set has brought many inclusions into the TCG meta, some more impactful as others, but their position might even change with the release of the new set and meta that will of course develop. You can never truly write off a card in a Pokemon TCG, usually they come back stronger than ever. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll be back with another video like this for Sharded Fable when the release time of Stellar Crown will be on the horizon. See you next time, goodbye and enjoy!